Today's edition of Mac Voices is supported by Mac Voices Magazine, our free Flipboard magazine that brings you some of the best Mac, iPhone, and iPad productivity tips on the web. High in signal, low in noise, just like Mac Voices, Mac Voices Magazine includes information on how you can get more out of your Apple technology. Subscribe at macvoices.com slash magazine or search for Mac Voices Magazine on Flipboard. And by the Mac Voices Dispatch, our weekly newsletter, to stay up to date on all the Mac Voices news. Subscribe from our front page or at macvoices.com slash newsletter. Welcome back to Mac Voices. This is the talk of the Apple community, and I'm Chuck Joyner. Folks, the Internet of Things is so popular, such a hot topic right now. Everybody's jockeying for position. But there's one that that kind of set a standard in one area of the Internet of Things, and that's the Ring Video Doorbell. I'm really happy for the first time, second time actually, because um, we met at CES, to welcome to Mac Voices Jamie Seminoff, the ringer, the, the the inventor of the Ring Video Doorbell, and, and the head ringer, and uh, the head ringer. Yeah, I'm, I'm both. We just uh, thank you for having me. It's fun to be on. Oh, it's we just gave you a new uh, title, Jamie. That's I, great. I, I, I've been called a lot of things. <laughs> the, the doorbell creates a a, a number of uh, fun uh, nicknames. So I'm, I'm sure some of them can't be repeated. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So I, I have to tell you, I feel like from where I sit, and by the way, folks, I do own a ring doorbell that I paid for, um, and I absolutely love it. Um, it has saved me many uh, an, an unfortunate encounter at my front door. But Jamie, you I don't know if yours was the very first, but you certainly are the one that's out there, and I think everybody measures themselves against. Yeah, I mean, we we actually were the first one to launch. We launched in uh, December 2012. Um, and not only that, I mean, I, we really kind of invented the, I mean, I invented the space um, of this in terms of no, one's, no one, I think, saw this, the doorbell as being this amazing space to put a camera. Um, I mean, there was video door phones uh, before us that went to panels on the inside of the house. But having it to your actual phone, I don't think anyone really understood the, the importance. And part of how I know that is I was laughed at for the first few years um, by pretty much everybody. Um, so it was like one of these, oh, he's building a doorbell. He stuck a camera in a doorbell. Oh, great. You know, it was like, and no one realized how important that actually is in terms of the neighborhood, the community, the home itself, the homeowners. So I, I, I give you a lot of credit because it does feel like there's a lot of that going on right now that people are slapping cameras on things, microphones on things. Yep doing an app and saying, wow, this is great. But the, the, the video doorbell is great in so many ways. Putting it, in, in our case, with an iPhone is even better because I can answer the phone, uh, excuse me, answer the door on my phone. I don't even have to be at home. And that, to me, is one of the big, big selling points of the deal. And it's great from a, like, that's a convenience thing, right? It's a huge convenience to be out of your house and be able to answer and get a package or whatever is happening at your home. It also brings presence into your home. Uh, you know, people are away more often now. And by bringing that presence back, by making the neighborhood fuller of presence, it actually changes the way sort of crime and other things are happening in our neighborhood in a very positive way. Yeah. It, and, and when I look back, it seems like, man, this should have been such a, such, such an obvious thing and such an obviously good idea. And, as you said, you know, everybody missed it except you. Congratulations. And I, I missed it also. I was just working in the garage and couldn't hear my doorbell and made my own Wi-Fi doorbell. And then people said it's a great thing. Like I, I didn't, I, you know, I didn't invent it in the way of I invented this big thing and had an unveiling and like, here's my, you know, like took the, the curtain off and now you have this product. Like it was a necessity that became an alpha product that became a real product, you know, it just kind of, it really rolled itself into what it is today. And I tell a lot of people, we just got lucky to be here. Um, I could have definitely developed something else that was less important easily and, and sort of been down a wrong road. The other thing that struck me though, when I got my, my doorbell is the quality of everything. It's, it's something that it's matter on the outside of my house, but it doesn't call attention to itself that much any more yep. than any other, uh, doorbell in the neighborhood. Um, the, the quality of the, of the camera and the video feed is so good and yet it's not obtrusive. I mean, it just, it, it just has that right balance of, of, of usability and, as much as as the techies among us, 
Yeah, I'm one of them. You know, you, you love the blinking lights and, and all the buttons, but this just does what it what it does, just what it needs to be. And, you know, again, the reason, part of the reason why it is such a great device today, and obviously there's a lot of team members that have worked very hard to get it there. We came out with the, the first device was called DoorBot. Um, and DoorBot was built by a bunch of guys and engineers in a garage. Um, the name itself was very techy. The, to talk about the blinking lights and the, we had this big camera ball on it, and you could actually move the camera around in the back. It was, it was, it was cool, but it was exactly the opposite of what you're talking about. And we realized that the front door is actually a place where people don't want technology in the sense of it calling itself out. Um, and we learned from that, and, and we took that feedback, and we rebuilt and retrenched and rebranded and re-everything. And so it's, you know, it's nice to hear, because that is what we went for. We wanted it to be something that fit into your home entrance, not that, like, screamed out, I have technology. Yeah. Well, and, and I think that's the case with your, your subsequent products, too, that they're not really obtrusive. There are options, and there are enough options, but just I don't have to spend two hours trying to figure out which options I want. And yeah. I, I love that about it. Well, we, and we definitely try to, I mean, we definitely try to take a simplistic approach. We also try to target, uh, I would say like the normal user. Um, you know, we're not a tech collector type of product. We're not just going for the highest features. We're really going for a, a product that works in a, in a sort of what's called a general place for a, for a normal person who lives in a home who wants to, feel better about that and have technology make their lives better. So we have the Ring video doorbell. Um, talk a little bit about it, some of its companions. The, the, the Ring chime comes to mind. Yeah. And so we have now, we have the Ring video doorbell, which is dual powered. So you can, you can do it battery operated and recharge it or actually run it off the, the doorbell wires. We actually have the Ring video doorbell pro, which is slightly smaller. Um, a little bit higher featured, a little more expensive, and only wired. Um, then we have the Chime, which is an indoor wireless Chime. Um, probably our most surprising product. I thought we'd sell, I don't know, ten or twenty thousand of them, and we've sold over two hundred thousand Chimes. Wow! Uh, so it's just amazing. I mean, I really I, that one I didn't expect to be as popular as it is. Very popular product. Um, and then um, we have the Stick Up Cam, which is a battery operated camera that you can put anywhere around the house on the outside of the house and sort of see what's going on and there's a solar panel option that goes with that um, which is really cool because then you can have a camera in a place where you have no wiring that stays charged forever with the solar panel let's talk a little bit about the stick up cam and and what kind of resolution it gets obviously it has to tap into your wi-fi network to give you the signal um, but uh, how long can i expect the stick up cam to to stay active on a charge, or however you want to call, however you want to say it. So the average right now is about is about 0.6 percent per day, is the decline of battery based on like average usage. So it's it's about like you know it's a little over three months. Like let's say going into the your four month sort of thing. So you can expect to charge it about three times a year on average usage. Okay. And then if you use the solar panel, you never have to charge it. Which to me, the solar panel is just like an amazing sort of killer feature. So, so if I charge it and and I can look, I can literally look at it for three months, or it, do I as I'm using the the camera, does it pull more power? Yeah, so that's it. Is, I mean, ba with battery, the thing you have to do is you have to make it feel like to the user that it's always on, but the reality is you can't. I mean, you can't be. I mean, there's just there isn't a battery big enough, and so the the trick is how do you do motion detection, live view? So how, you know when you want to see out of the camera being able to do that. And so how do you sort of do all that without burning the battery to death? Yeah, the motion detection, thank you for bringing that up because that's, I think, interesting. It's extremely important on my front door. Um, yep. And I would think it would be extremely important in the stick-up cam that I, I have a tree out in front of my front door. And if the wind blows and I don't have the, the settings right, it's constantly saying there's motion at your front door. Um, so you, you include that kind of control and it works really well. You can pretty much fine tune it to just how sensitive you want it to be. Yeah. And, the, and, and motion is a really tough thing to solve because there's so many variables that can set off motion detection that even look like humans. I mean, even when you use computer vision, it can still get fooled. And so by, yeah, by giving our users the ability to sort of turn up and down, 
uh, the sensitivity and also changing left and right kind of where you want to and turning areas off. Uh, it has allowed for people to really dial it in. And that's been kind of a fun thing to watch is people being able to dial in their motion the way they want it to work. So back to the stick up cam, I'm sorry, I'm kind of bouncing up, but oh. I, t I tend to think oh. of them as all very similar products. Sure. Um, do you, can I initiate a connection with the stick up cam uh, so that I'm sitting here and, and, and just for whatever reason, I want to look at the backyard. And can I activate the camera, or is it more like the the ring where it, the the doorbell has to initiate the contact with me? So we actually have live view on every product right now. So live view being meaning you can just you know go on and turn it on on every product right now. The only one we don't have it on is a ring video doorbell that's battery operated. And okay. you can actually technically, and so if anyone's listening and wants to, you can call into customer service and have it turned on to those. Um, our issue is we've been rolling stuff out slowly on the live view because it actually is very, it takes a lot of server space. And so we've been, we had to carefully sort of roll it by product line. Um, so the last one to go is the ring video doorbell battery only, which I, I assume you must be battery only then. No, no, I, I guess I haven't turned it on, uh, turned you on know, the if, live view. If you look in your app, um, and click on the camera, you'll see live view in there. Maybe you just didn't even know it was on. Okay. Okay. So yeah, you, you can you can view that. Okay, that's I mean, there's not that much exciting happening at my house, so I not but it's it's, it's nice to have. It's nice to I have. I mean, and the thing is, like, I think when you get used to the motion detection working, it, it's like, why are you going to access a camera when there's nothing going on there? Exactly. Uh, it is kind of fun. I mean, I actually I I actually do kind of voyeur around my house and use it and just kind of look at stuff, you know. But like, I don't know why, but I do turn it on every once in a while. Um, for the live view. So it is, it's a nice feature to have, but it's certainly, it's definitely not a killer feature because the killer feature is motion detection, being told when you should look, not having you try to look all the time. Yeah. And, and I'm always amazed at the people who are on the other side of the door ringing it and I'm talking to them. They, they never have a problem hearing me or understanding me. Um, and I never have any trouble hearing or understanding them as long as they're not standing, you know, back at the far edge of the porch trying to yell right. at me. Um, sure. It, it's it's just that's just it. It's so well done that all the little things are there, and I I can't say to you, gee Jamie, it would be great, but ah, the image is not that good, or the the mic needs to be improved. It just works the way exactly yeah, the way I want it to. On each one of these things we put in, actually, I mean, there's a lot of time and focus that goes into it. Like on the speakers, there's actually two speakers inside of it to get even louder uh, when you have such a small speaker, and so we really like put a lot of focus on. You know, I hate, like, I don't know if you've ever been to a place where you have an intercom and you have to, like, put your ear and you're kind of, like, talking and you're, you're, you're putting your ear on it and this whole thing. That always bothered me. So I said, like, I will not ship a device that you can't, ba like, even with loud street noise behind it, you know, that you, you can't talk and, and with the person and having, you know, noise reduction on the chips. And so there's a lot of expense and time. You know, each, it's amazing how many details go into making, like, what you're saying. Like, you love the product experience. When you actually get into it to make this thing, it's 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 kind of a, it's a lot of work. It's, it's, I think it's more than you think of when you're like, oh, it's a doorbell that has a camera. You know, it's like you start to get into each piece, and it's it, it gets very. Um, it, yeah, I think I think it's it's way more complex than people would sort of first first think that it is. And I think that's true of just about anything. When it works, yes. when it works well, you you don't see all the hassles that that right. uh, went into making it work well. Yeah. So. And I think and I think Apple is the is the the I think the leader, maybe even the father of that movement or the parent of that movement um, in terms of making stuff that just feels to you so simple. But as we all know, it's certainly nothing simple about pretty much any of their products. I, I'm really impressed by what you said about rolling things out to each product line and rolling things out slowly and getting them right. Uh, because we have seen plenty, as the Internet of Things has become a big thing, and God knows it's CES this year it was, you know, oh. you, you see people just get getting things out and they either, first of all, they either never come out or sometimes they come out a year, two years later, and they still aren't as good as they, they really should be. Um, do you have really put yourself out there as the, the quality choice? And I really respect that. Yeah, th I mean, thank you. And I think it comes from you have to have, we have a very long term outlook on the business. Um, and we're sort of, so we're very conservative and slow. I mean, we're actually kind of, I mean, I guess we're sort of fast in some ways, but overall, we're actually, 
we don't just jump into everything because I, we do believe delivering a quality service is the most important thing, not the next feature. Um, now, that doesn't mean we don't roll out features. It just means, like you said, that we kind of do it in a mitigated fashion. We're very sort of, we almost have a pace to our business that we go to. Um, because if you go too fast, you, you can break things. And when you break things, you, you kind of destroy the entire experience. Yeah. Well, and you get a reputation as someone that it, it used to be good and now it's not so much. And, yeah. you know, the, the streets are littered with those things. Yeah. Um, Talk for just a quick second. You said the, the Ring uh, Video Doorbell Pro with, with more features. What kind of features are in that device? The big one is 1080p. Um, so that's a, it uses also, it has a vision. It does some computer vision on the motion detection, not just the PIR. Um, so in the, um, in the Ring Video Doorbell Classic, which is what you have, we're using passive infrared for motion, which is, which is good. Um, but on a battery, that's you, you have to, on lower power, that's all you can use. You can't keep that camera on all the time. On the Ring Video Doorbell Pro, the camera's on all the time. Uh, and so it's using that as part of the, the motion detection. Um, a little bit of a sleeker design because taking the battery out, we're able to go a little bit sleeker with it. Um, so it's really, I mean, it's, it's, you know, it's, a, it's 249 versus 199. So it's a little bit of a step up, but not, not crazy. Okay, so let's get to the really fun topic. Um, okay. you're putting a camera on my front door, you're putting a camera in my backyard or on my back porch or back deck or whatever, and you're broadcasting video into my house on my okay. Wi-Fi network. What kind of security issues are there with that? And, and what steps have you taken to maintain the privacy? Because now we're, now we're talking video and that sometimes can catch things that people would rather not have caught. Yeah. So, so there's, you know, you basically end to end encryption. Is, is a must. So you have to encrypt everything end to end. Um, you know, the, the one thing, I think this is the one thing that people don't understand the most is keeping your Wi-Fi secure is a very important thing. Because if someone can get on your Wi-Fi, they can sniff all the packets out. Now, our packets are, are, are encrypted. So it would, they'd basically be getting encrypted packets, which are, are, are but, but there's a lot of stuff on your Wi-Fi that's, you know, that, that, as you know, is, is you might not want people getting that's not encrypted. Um, so really the best thing I think always, you know, is tell people have good passwords on your Wi-Fi because um, that's something that no one can control. From there, we do, we have multiple companies that do intrusion testing on our products. Um, that's, I think, the best way to do security is obviously one is plan for security and have it as part of your ethos as a company. The other one is to have intrusion testings happening. So have hackers trying to hack in, finding the holes, patching the holes before they become released, you know, because any, any product, and we've seen it, can have holes show up. Um, you just need to patch them before they become a problem. And, and you know, we've had, a, we've had one hole that we did find. We found it before anyone else found it. We patched it. We uh, put it out. And then by the time sort of that hole was released, because it was actually a chip that we were using, it wasn't our, it was not our problem. It was a, the, the, one of the chips we were using. Uh, we had already patched it six months earlier. So, yeah, that's something that a lot of people don't understand, that th these these things come with holes, sometimes from the original parts. Yes. Um, but, you know, hey, iOS, uh, you know, th there have been some issues found with those. They get patched, and, and that's it. So none of these things have been widespread, but it's it's just part, I guess, of the of the 21st century. And, it's, I, th and I think that's what you want a company that doesn't I, – I mean – yeah, I hear people say like we never, you know, we we fix security. Like we're 100 percent secure. Like that's there's no such thing. Security is a living and breathing organism, and what you want is companies that are always looking for security issues and fixing them because they do. They come from other vendors. It's not just you, and that's why it's it's a, a difficult problem. It's not just your issue. You everyone has to work with other chips and pieces from other vendors. And so it's the end, end of the customer, which it which should be. Security is just end to end. Like they just want to have their stuff secure. They don't care if it was the hard drive you bought from Seagate or the, the Wi-Fi chip you bought from Texas Instrument. They don't care where it comes from. They just want security. Right. right. Talk also for a second about, because some, something we didn't mention with any of this is, um, is the option to save the video to the cloud and to your cloud yep. service. Yeah, so we have an optional recording service, three dollars a month or thirty dollars a year. Um, six, and it stores everything for six months. Okay, so define everything for me. 
all of the motion detections, date doorbell dings, any video that we've captured. Okay. A live view, if you do a live view, anything. Okay. And I have the option at any point to download any of that as well if I want to archive it for longer than six months. Yeah. Yeah. You can download any of the videos. Um, you can del obviously like delete, archive, all that kind of sort of like normal inbox stuff. Okay. So 30, 30 bucks a year to have a record of everybody that comes near my front door or my stick up cam or whatever is pretty darn good. Yep. It's, it's, it's for yeah. And I think, you know, again, to our, as a business, we try to be very fair. Um, you know, we might even be able to charge more and keep the same sort of levels of people coming onto the service. But, you know, it, it, it's, you know, based on our cost, $3 a month is something that we can sustain. And that I think is, is fair to the customer. And so we do, we really do try to be, again, long-term and fair to the customer because we want to build a brand that people want to be part of long-term. I don't want to just sell you once. You know, I, I want to, I want you to keep you in that brand. I want you talking about it. Like we, we want to, you know, we, we call our customers neighbors. Like we want our neighbors to be around for a long time. I like that. I like that a lot. Um, I, I have to ask, where did you come from? What, what's your, <laughs> what's your background? I mean, obviously you're here because of the ring video doorbell, but sure. what were you doing before this became a thing? So I was, um, I grew up in New Jersey, uh, went to a little college in Boston called Babson. Uh, I actually, I started a telecom business out of college in third world countries doing voice over IP. Um, so it was a, I was in all these crazy sort of Eastern European countries and stuff right out of college doing voice over IP. So I was always a kind of a hack together entrepreneur. So I was building VoIP networks early on and, but I always learned it myself. I mean, I always just kind of hack stuff together myself and I had a, a company that did voicemail to text. So you could read your voicemail called phone tag. And I sold that in 2009. Um, and then I basically went into my garage and just started kind of building stuff, which is like what the dream of any, I think, uh, inventor is, is to just go in your garage and be left alone and, and build crap. And the, I mean, and literally, you know, amazing that the problem was I, you know, I couldn't hear the freaking doorbell there. So that was, you know, so it ended up, you know, putting myself in the garage, I ended up building my biggest business ever. So <laughs> sometimes that's the way it happens. I, it's, it's probably the best way to have it happen because it's real. Like, you know, I solved a real problem that I, you know, that people are having and I saw it because I put myself in this sort of extreme situation. So it's, is it fair to say that uh, these products, that the products we just mentioned are not going to be the only ones coming from Ring? So we build, <laughs> we build around three rings of security. The ring of security around your front door, which is our doorbells. We have two out today. Uh, we announced a third one called Elite, which is a uh, J box, like a junction box, flush mount one, more for an installer. Um, and we'll keep sort of broadening that line on the doorbells. And then we build the ring of security around your home, which is things like our stick up camera. And we'll have other cameras for around the home. Um, and then we have the third ring of security, which is the ring of security around your neighborhood. And that's actually not product, that's data. So that's how we can use data in a, in a, in a privacy um and being careful of privacy with the neighbors uh, to make neighborhoods safer. Because again, our mission as a company is actually to reduce crime in neighborhoods. Um, and so once we get into a neighborhood um, and have enough uh, rings and cameras in that neighborhood, it becomes really interesting how you can use that data to then make a neighborhood much safer. Hmm. Hadn't thought about exactly going that direction. So it, it really does become a neighborhood thing. Yes, it really does. Huh. Okay. I'll look forward to learning more about that as, uh, as things go along. Well, this, this year at CES, we're going to launch some cool stuff around that. So, All right. So that means I'll come and see you at CES, and maybe then you can tell me about it. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Jamie, if you would, just give us a quick rundown on, on the pricing of, of everything. I think we've mentioned it a couple pieces, but just for the folks that are sitting sure. there making notes and wanting to make their, their wish list. Uh, Ring Video Doorbell Classic, the dual power sort of uh, works on any home, $199. Ring Video Doorbell Pro, a little sleeker, a little higher performance, is $249. Stick up camera is the, the battery operated stick up camera is $199. You can add the solar panel on it for $49. Uh, and then the chime is $29. And that's a Wi Fi, just internal little plug in chime. And I'm going to put my plug in here, folks. You know, we all have this. We're all playing with the Internet of Things stuff, and the, the light bulbs are fun, but you know, you really have to think about how you're going to use those. This is something that once you install it, you will be amazed, and you will not want to live without it because it's so convenient. It gives you a different sense of security and certainly prevents you from having to deal with those people that are forever ringing your doorbell trying to get your attention or trying to get you to buy something. 
So, I, Jamie, for that, I thank you. <laughs> and, and for saying it, I thank you. So, yeah, no, I mean, it is, I think it's every customer, the fun thing is when they email me, my email is actually on the box. So if anyone wants to contact me, just buy one of our products. My email's right on the side of the box. Um, I think what's amazing is, is how when they get it, they didn't realize how important the front door was to them and their house. And it's like how excited they are to see their kids coming home from school or not having to go get outside to see a solicitor that's trying to sell them some sort of crappy something and that kind of stuff. So it's, it is fun to always hear those stories. Well, and I have to throw one more in too, because um, I have friends who have house the kind of houses that they don't put screen doors or storm doors on anymore. So when you open your front door, I mean, you're right there. The world is right there. There's nothing. I mean, f forget how good or bad. There's just nothing between you and whoever yep. is there. And if you don't have a people or something, you're opening yourself up to who knows what. This way, you never, you don't even have to go to the door. You can just pull your phone out, look at it, talk to them, find out, and. If you want to talk to them, then great. And if not, tell them that you're not available. Yep. No, it's a great way to screen and not have anyone know who's in the house or who's, you know, who's answering the door or any, any of that kind of stuff. It is a nice, again, that's the security side that we really bring and give people is this nice feeling of being home in a, in a good way. Jamie, I can't wait to see what's coming next. It's going to be uh, good, very interesting. Thank you. I, I can't wait to show it to you. So the website where folks go to uh, learn more is? ring r-i-n-g dot com how did you ever get that domain jamie a million dollars yeah. <laughs> really that's it really was wow it's really simple okay well it's that simple but it was i mean it was a million bucks I and mean, that's what it was wow well good investment I, it turned out to be yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Okay. keep keep it going yeah. all right jamie thank you so much for the time good to talk to you okay, I really appreciate it folks i'm chuck joiner this is mac voices go for your very first internet of things purchase the Ring video doorbell. You will not be sorry, I promise you. Until the next time, thanks for watching. Visit macvoices.com for show notes, links to subscribe, and to connect with Chuck on Twitter, Google+, Facebook, YouTube, Vimeo, SoundCloud, the Mac Voices blog, the Mac Voices Dispatch, our weekly newsletter, and on Mac Voices Magazine, free on Flipboard that helps you do more with your Apple tech. Advertising handled by Backbeat Media at backbeatmedia.com. Bandwidth provided by Cashfly at cashfly.com.